Hey, I'm Galvan Gamer, and welcome back to Zwift. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Giro d'Italia, which kicks off, uh, well, today, actually, or at least at the time that you're looking at this. I always record one day ahead of time when it comes to Zwift. I know I'm going to have a lot more viewers than what I normally have. Uh, unfortunately, though, I'm going to have to use stock footage on this one. I was planning on doing a ride today. I actually missed my last ride two days ago, uh, which is terrible because literally the episode before that, I was talking about motivation and I was talking about how I'm one of those kind of people that just have to do. I commit and I do and I commit and I do and I just do and do and do and I don't quit. When I take days off, especially if I take multiple days off, things fall apart in a real hurry for me and that's why I just don't take time off. I just keep doing uh, literally in the last, what, 12, 13 years, I've honestly only taken a handful of days off, period, total, uh, ever. I mean, I occasionally have weekends off, but in terms of extra days on top of that, I just have to do and go, otherwise things fall apart. Well, this is terrible for me because uh, I'm kind of getting forced into this. I'm at hardly functioning uh, levels right now. So I, I live in the Pacific Northwest along uh, what's known as the Willamette River Valley. So the Willamette Valley, this is the second worst region in the entire world when it comes to... Uh, allergens, pollens in the air. And our scale compared to everybody else is a good day for us is one of the worst days most regions will have ever seen when it comes to to their pollen counts. Uh, for us, it's like, oh, that's a fantastic day. Your allergy shouldn't be as bad on that particular day. And, and actually, honestly, today is one of those days where the pollen count is down a bit. However, this is our tree pollen season and the tree pollen at the moment uh, other than today anyway is really bad and that's the one that's the one that gets to me that's the one that gives me a hard time and usually it's just sneezing and you know minor stuff and I, I deal with it and I'm fine and I move on uh, but it's it's gotten inside and it's gotten into my head and it's giving me a pressure headache that is severe. Uh, I was completely out of whack for two days. <clears throat> Excuse me, see I can't even hardly talk. I was completely out of whack for two days and then yesterday was a little bit better and I got a lot done yesterday and I was, I was recovering from it and this morning started fine and I was getting a lot done and then it just it just hit me again and it's it's so bad right now. I do have my, my voiceover though for my predictions on the Jiro and you know what, this is a long enough intro. Let's go ahead and get to it. So yeah, sorry, it's stock footage and that's one more day without a ride and that sucks so bad. But hopefully I'll be okay and back ride as rain with maybe a little more of that in the sky knocking things down. That's actually why it's a little bit better today as we've, we've had a bit of rain, but it's still, it's still in there and it's still affecting me. So let's see if I can get back to normal here in the near future. Let's get on with the discussion and what you're here for. Giro d'Italia, on the way. With so much to talk about, let's just get right into things. I'm going to start with the sprinters. Let's get that out of the way. I think Caleb Ewan might win the most stages, but I don't think he's going to take the jersey. I think the jersey is going to go to Peter Sagan if he wants it. If Peter Sagan goes for the jersey, we know from the tour just how amazing he is. And this is going to be a particularly difficult tour. There's only five sprint stages. There's a lot of punchy ones. You gotta be able to ride in the break. You gotta be able to get a lot of intermediates. I think Ewan's gonna focus on stages, on those five in particular, and he could win two or three of those. Sagan, I think ultimately, is gonna take that jersey. Grunewagen coming back from nine months suspension, I think absolutely is gonna be capable of getting a stage or two in terms of victories challenging Ewan for that and will be that top challenger. However, I don't think uh, he's going to be terribly well in form because it's been nine months. And so even though he's fresh, he might find it a little bit difficult. Uh, other sprinters, Gaviria, will certainly challenge. It could take a stage, but I don't think he'll get more than that. Um, Merlier might. We'll, we'll see what he's able to do. Uh, but I, I think that's about it. Uh, Max Cantor we could see on a podium for a stage or two, but I, I don't know if it, anybody else is going to challenge there. In terms of the KOM, I have honestly no idea. My thoughts on the matter is one of the early contenders. 
is going to miss out. And we'll, we'll talk about why uh, among the first half of the race. They're going to miss out and be out of contention. And one of those contenders will probably then go on to win the KOM, changing their focus from GC to that jersey and, and then be able to go and claim that. I think a Vincenzo Nibali or a Balcomolima uh, of Trek, either one of those could be a, a real challenger for that as I think Trek is going to be a little too weak. They've got some climbers, they've got some good climbers, uh, but they are lacking in certain ways. And so let me get that first GC nod out of the way of I don't think Trek is going to end up competing. And I think they're going to miss out on the top 10 entirely, even though they've got a few good climbers. Of course, Nibali has won. But I, mm, yeah, I just I, I think they're going to be fighting for a KOM and probably competing one of the top two or three in that competition uh, as they're going to miss out on the GC side of things. Now, onto the GC itself. A lot of people are going to pick Egon Bernal, uh, GCN, none of them, not a single one picked Bernal to win. I think they're going to be strong contenders though. Uh, we'll come back to where I think they might place, but you've got Bernal, you've got Ghana, who yes, okay, time trialing, but he's a pretty decent support climber. And then you have Sivakov, who in his own right e easily could be a GC contender here. And then Danny Martinez, who could be a contender here, and for his former team, always was a contender for most of these races, and is a very strong climber. You've got Narvaez, you've got Moscon, you've got a great uh, team captain in Castro Viejo. So you, you've got a solid Ineos Grenadiers team at this race. Now, depending on his back, Bernal absolutely is a podium contender. I think AG2 are lacks the firepower. They're not going to be competitive. Astana, their top man is Vlasov. And I think on his day, Vlasov could certainly contend. And he's a rising name in the sport. I think Vlasov will be competing in the top 10. I don't think he's going to get much higher than that. Uh, Vlasov is a little too weak in a few too many areas, uh, which we'll come back to in just a second because I want to start breaking down some of those stages. Bahrain... Mikel Landa, again, another one of those where people would pick him. And he does have some support climbers here. Uh, Bilbao, Mohoric, uh, Caruso, Mater. I mean, he's got some decent support. However, I think when it comes down to the big stages, a couple things happen. Bahrain overcommit and then fall short. Uh, and two, Landa. Landa tends to lose big chunks of times. Of, of time on some of the big stages and there are going to be some of those in this race let's go ahead and step away from the gc for a second we'll come back to the other teams and let me start talking about some of these stages this giro is going to be brutal one of the toughest giros we've ever seen stage one short under 10k time trial slash prologue that's going to separate the standings early on but not by much stage three down to a punchy climber you need to be a punchy climber to place well on that one and there could be some small time losses for those climbers who aren't punchy who are just pure climbers we could see some guys missing out i think bernal uh, a venipole could do really well that day uh, but others others could definitely find themselves in a little bit of trouble and then on to stage six pure climber First pure climber stage. We're going to start to see the GC reshape a bit after stage six, but not a terribly decisive stage. We're just going to see a lot of the, you know, outside of the top 14, 15 riders drop off, maybe even 20 riders. It's not the hardest stage, but stage nine is a hard multi climb stage that's going to have some stamina resistance effect that is going to impact the GC a bit more that I think than stage six will and we're gonna see a couple contenders that day drop away that's where I think like a Nibali uh, possibly a Landa are going to lose fairly significant chunks of time and then we have stage 11 and stage 11 is a nod to Strada Bianchi stage 11 is a gravel stage 35 kilometers of 
gravel in that one. And some climbs, very late, a couple of them. Uh, not huge climbs, but with the gravel and with those climbs, we're going to see classics focused riders really, really emerge. Peter Sagan's going to have a good day on that day, I think. Avenapol is probably going to win that stage or be the favorite to win that stage. I think Egon Bernal is going to have a fantastic day. And I think a lot of GC guys are going to lose pretty big chunks of time. Now, their teams are going to work for them and limit those losses. It's not going to be like a typical classic. It would be a great, great stage to watch, though. I, I think it's going to be possibly the most exciting stage of the tour. Not necessarily the queen stage, but the most exciting to me. I, I love that type of profile. But here's what I expect to happen. I think by the end of stage 11, I think a Venipole is going to be in a podium place, possibly in the race lead, but it's not going to last long for him. A lot of people are talking about Aventipol as a possible contender for the race, but the stages to come after stage 11, it, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to come together. He's not a strong enough climber with the stages to follow, but I think absolutely he will be in a podium place, if not the race lead. I do believe that Bernal is also going to be in one of those podium places after stage 11. And he's going to have time advantages over most of his contenders. Here's who I think can climb uh, and also still be capable on the cobbles, well, the gravel a bit and hang in there. I think Danny Martinez is going to help. And he's riding with Enios. He's going to help Bernal. That's that's going to be a big combo there and one of the reasons why he's going to be successful. I do think that Simon Yates is going to put in a decent time on that one, but I think he'll lose a little bit. He'll find himself around 6th, 7th, 8th place after that stage, but in a good place to then move up towards the podium in the stages to follow. I think Henley, with Bardet's support, is going to absolutely be in a strong place. Top 5 by that point, very competitive. Uh, Dan Martin should be hanging in there. Landa should not lose time on that one, but I think he'll have lost time on either stage 6 or 9, and that will just maybe get him back inside the top 10. But you got to watch out for those guys. And if names weren't mentioned in there, there's a good chance that those riders, like Vlasov, are going to lose quite a bit of time on stage 11, especially like a Vlasov, who does have some support climbers, but does not have support classics guys. And I think that combination, the gravel and those couple of punchy, bigger climbs towards the end of that one, are going to hurt riders like Vlasov. Let's continue back on the GC before we get into the final stages of the tour that are then going to flip it on its head from where it was after stage 11. Bora, they've got Peter Sagan, they've got some riders that are there to support Sagan, but then they also have riders to support Bookman. Grosschartner, of course, is a good climber he will provide some good support for bookman but bookman not good on the gravel not a punchy climber so he's gonna struggle through those first 11 stages i think bookman's gonna be trying to fight to make up time from possibly a little bit outside of the top 10 in the final stages and work his way up the order i'm not sure if he's gonna have enough to climb into the top five though by the end of this tour for Duquette quick step you have two leaders in uh, Joao Almeida and then Avenipol. I think Avenipol might be leading that race after stage 11. I think Almeida will not. I think Almeida is going to be down the order a little bit. He doesn't have the punchiness. He doesn't have the uh, the pure classic ability. He's not going to do well on the gravel. I think Almeida is going to lose some time. He's going to be down the order and then he's going to have to try to commit to helping Avenipol. Now he's a stronger climber than Avenipol. And later on, this story could flip. Almeida might still be inside the top 10, in which case they'll try to support both guys. But that's going to hurt the team a little bit, trying to support two riders instead of committing to one. Dukenik's going to have a little bit of problem. And I think by the end of this one, they'll be lucky to have a rider still in the top 10 by the final stage. Though, like I said, I think they might be wearing that pink a bit in the first half of this tour. EF... McCarthy is another one who could struggle in the early stages, but then make up time late on. Will it be enough to get into the podium places? I don't know. Top five? 
properly. Carthy is pretty solid, and he'll have some support. Israel Startup Nation have a quiet contender in Dan Martin. He's always a quiet contender. He does have some climbing support, but not great. And that's part of the reason why it'll be quiet. He'll be alone on those climbs, hanging on, surviving. Uh, but Dan Martin's okay on the gravels. He's a little bit punchy, not much. I, I don't think he'll ever be sniffing first place. I, I don't think he'll be anywhere near the pink jersey. But I think he will be in the top 10 throughout the race and maybe competing for a podium place. More likely top five. For Movistar, we have Mark Soler. He doesn't have a lot of support here. He's got a couple of pretty strong climbers, Oliveira, uh, Rubio, but that's about where that ends. Soler, not good in a classic setting. Soler, not good in the long, multiple climb, uh, really wears down the stamina type stages. I think Soler will be in and around, and that movie star team on some of the stages will absolutely be at the front burying themselves for him hoping for a stage or hoping to get back into contention he might end up riding for KOM I think in this one if they're realistic because I I'm not sure Solaire is going to even crack the top 10 to be honest with you I think they'll be trying for it and I think he might blow up pretty bad and lose significant chunks of time Jumbo Visma has sent a huge message here Grudewegen is the leader George Bennett is their GC hope and they did not bring much support. They've got Foss. They've, they've got a little bit of climbing capability. They're, they're not completely absent. Jumbo Visma is arguably the strongest team in the Peloton right now. I think the clear message that Jumbo Visma has sent is they have every intention of winning the Tour de France this year because they have left literally all but one of their top guys. They've left them home. So George Bennett's going to go in with very little support. George Bennett's not good on on gravel. George Bennett's not a punchy guy. He's a slow, steep, sink climb, just hang on kind of rider. I think Bennett, lucky to be in the top 10. George Bennett could end up being another KOM type contender as I think Jumbo Visma has already thrown in the towel on the Giro in favor of a, a Tour de France victory potentially. I think that is the most clear thing about this Giro. Likewise, talking about that the competitor, that main competitor, Enios. Enios has brought a pretty strong team here. Not absolutely their strongest. I, I think this could be a year where Enios is trying to look at the outer two Grand Tours. I think they might be looking, trying to win the Giro and La Vuelta and maybe conceding the Tour de France this year. M you know, bringing a strong team and maybe going for podium, but not necessarily their strongest. Bernal is here, after all. I think it could be a sign that they are committed to trying to win a double and miss out on, on that one. And it looks like that could pay off for them. Jumbo Visma could take the tour, and Ineos could very well take the outer two Grand Tours. DSM, Jay, Jay Henley, absolutely could be a contender. Very quiet on the surface, but I think in the end of this thing, Jay Henley uh, could be competing. I think Jay Henley has a great chance at getting on the podium and competing to win this. He's got Bardet good on gravel, and Henley's good on gravel, so he'll hang on through there. He's also a little bit punchy, so he should still be in a strong position, possibly a podium position after that stage 11. Before I go over the rest of the DSM team, let's talk about the final stages. 14, Mount Zankala, the hardest climb the Giro's ever had, That's and that's just stage 14, and it's mountaintop finish. Stage 16, 5,700 meters of climbing over four massive climbs. That's going to drop away a ton of contenders with the sheer amount of climbing involved on that day with huge time gaps. And then stage 19, a big climb. And stage 20, a crazy amount of climbing. Super hard day. And then you've got a 30K time trial to wrap up the tour on stage 21. I don't think the time trial is going to end up having... A massive effect because I think we're gonna have large time gaps post stage 20 and that yes positions can flip but only in a minor fashion I think from first to tenth we're gonna see very very large time gaps meaning stage 21 is gonna be a little less relevant than it would otherwise be your stronger time trialists like an Avenipole Avenipole is gonna be long gone after stage 20 
he might be leading after stage 11, but I think he might be out of the t out of the top 10 by the time we hit stage 21 and trying to fight his way back into it or, you know, into 8th place or 7th place. I don't think he'll be competing for a top 5. I honestly don't think so. Venipole's a good climber, and I think if he really, really focuses on it, I think in time he can develop that in a couple of years. He can develop that mountain ability and, and compete as a GC guy. He's a fantastic time trialist and a great, great classics rider, but I just I don't think he's quite there on the mountains, and this is just too hard. The 14, 16, 19, 20 profiles are just too tough for the likes of Venipole and Landa. Uh, Carthy, Carthy's going to be up there, but George Bennett, Nibbly, those guys are all going to miss out on stages like that. Now, going back to Team DSM for a second, Hindley has support. He is a very strong climber. He's got Bardet, he's got Roche, he's got Arndt, he's got Hamilton. Denzin Storer will provide a bit of support, but that is a strong team. DSM has some definite support climbers, and where other teams, you'll have some Ineos riders plus Bernal, and you'll have a lot of guys riding solo. Hindley's going to have some support late on those difficult stages, and I think that's going to help Hindley out a lot. And that leaves us with one team we haven't talked about, and that would be Team Bike Exchange, Simon Yates. A lot of British fans are definitely picking Simon Yates this year. I would love to see Simon Yates get that victory, get that redemption. However, I, I'm worried for him. He's got some climbing support, but it's not great. Schultz, Nieve, Scottson, I, I mean, they're decent climbers. They're good climbers. Let me rephrase that. They're good climbers. But that's not the same level of support that some of these other guys have. That's maybe fourth, fifth best in the peloton in terms of support. That's going to hurt Simon Yates. He's not a great punchy climber, so stage three could lose a small amount of time. Stage 11... He's decent on on gravel. He'll be okay, but he might lose a little bit of time. So Simon Yates could find himself 6th, 7th, 8th place after that midway point. And then we're going to hit those big climbs. And he'll recover some time. And he'll be better than a lot of the contenders. He's not going to have that support. And when it comes down to those final few kilometers, he's going to be riding solo. And with four big, big climbing stages, Yates has one serious problem. And we've seen it. We've seen it more than once. We saw it, obviously, three years ago, but we've seen it more than once. And Yates' big problem is he will go full red and then just blow up and lose 40 minutes or half an hour or 20 minutes or 10 minutes. He digs too deep. He'll go half a kilometer too long. And instead of saving a little something and finishing off and losing a minute, he'll turn that into huge losses. And I think there's too many chances, there's too many opportunities and there's too little support for Simon Yates that I think that's going to happen at least once on those four stages. I think the only chance that Simon Yates has of winning this race is that A, he does not lead until after stage 20. I think he would have to take the lead on stage 20. That's his only chance to win because his team certainly can't lead this tour and protect that jersey. He'll be in all sorts of trouble if that happens. Uh, and and two, I think Bernal is going to have to have problems as in back problems if he has a fall if, if he has a fall somewhere along the tour and lands on his back the back issues that he's already got combined with the potential pain from from a fall could cause some trouble but honestly i think if that happens Ineo still has a chance to win the tour i think if bernal slips down i think Sivakov could end up winning or martinez could end up winning I think Ineos is going to be too much to handle for most of the teams. And I honestly think the only way that they lose this tour is if Bernal ends up with a problem. So here's my pick. And I think some of this is going to be pretty obvious at this point. I think Bernal is going to win. I think he's taking the pink jersey. And I think it could be a wide margin. I think that margin might close a little bit on stage 21. But I think he'll be well ahead. I think he'll probably have a three-minute advantage after stage 20. Maybe more. Maybe four. Heading into that final stage, you know, he might lose a minute or something. But he's not going to lose a huge chunk of time. I think Hindley might be claiming second place on this one because of the team support that he has. With Yates potentially blowing up and losing three, four, five minutes on one stage. I think that's going to cost Yates his chance at winning, and 
I think that's going to cost him second place. I have Yates for third. So that's my podium. Bernal, Hindley, Yates. Let, let me know what you think in the comments below, who your picks are. And let's go ahead and wrap this episode up.